Hey, are you Harry down there? What? Are you Harry down there and no, everywhere? I'm, I'm Steve. Steve. Yes. Steve, what's your last name? Glenn. No. Your other last name. Dangle? That's right. <laughs> the one that everybody knows. Oh, Because right. it's, it's a spot, right? We're doing a, a little promo here for oh, Manscaped. I get it. Sorry, my dad so, listens. Yeah, Sorry. there you go. Yeah, you, you know what? Listen, dangle is the key word that you need to go to manscaped.com and use to get 20% off and free shipping. Let's start the show. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Canada's Sportsbook. D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Uh, with a little shout out to Austin Matthews. Best player in the league. I told you. What did I tell you? As voted by the media. And the players. And, and as voted by his peers. Is there anything Connor McDavid can do to surpass him? No. <laughs> can I remind you guys that neither of you picked him to win the Ted Lindsay when we did our awards predictions? Did, and that I, I picked really? him, to, I I picked was him to win the heart in like February. And Edmonton blew up my shit. And I still, and I'm right. So give me that. Please give me this. I was the only one to say Matthews is going to win the Ted Lindsay. I don't know how that happened. You, but. you know what? It was, it was a mistake. And I'll tell you why it was a mistake. The players really like him. Like the players really like Austin oh, Matthews. He's popular. So he's he's using his his media. His media. <laughs> well, no, his his no, he's it's his connections with the elites. Ah. The elites. Connor doesn't have of that. the NHL. No. He doesn't. Definitely not. No, certainly hey, not. So, but this is great. I don't know. This is great. Uh Ted I, Lindsay and the Heart. And and it's a double whammy. You know, I was talking with uh one of our listeners on the, on uh on Twitter last night. Uh and once the Ted Lindsay was announced, because for some reason it's the lesser of the two, or it's like the warm up to the heart. I don't know why. What would you rather win? If you had to pick one, let's say Connor wins one, Matthews wins the other, you're Matthews or you're Connor. Which one do you want? Do you want the one that's voted on by the players, the Ted Lindsay award, or the heart that's voted on by the media? Which one is considered the MVP? I don't, I guess it would have to be the Ted Lindsay. No, no, it'd it's be the, the heart. heart. <laughs> be the heart. MVP. So if you're MVP of any league, you make more money. It's hey, you don't we, get a Ted Lindsay bonus. We have. A, I don't think there's a lot of Ted Lindsay bonuses out there. Maybe you don't have to pay pay as many uh, NHLPA dues if you win the uh, Ted Lindsay. Highly doubt. It. Okay, highly right. doubt. So I I think uh, the heart gets you a lot of money. Yeah, the heart's the original uh, MVP uh, established in 1924. The Ted Lindsay oh. didn't come around until 1971. Oh. oh, what's up? I'm Mr. History, Jesse Blake. Ooh. That's very cool. Jesse's I didn't know that. So. I didn't know the Ted Lindsay was that old, to be honest with you. 71, yeah. Not, pretty, not bad. Wasn't it called something else, like the Lester B. Pearson or it something? Was. Yeah. That's why. Okay. It was called the Airport Award. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's called That Guy Was a Prime Minister for a While Award. Yep. Don't get that, That's, but oh, yep. he, was, he was cool. Um, Peacekeeping and all that. But, it's going to be really interesting when we have like the John Gretchen Award for best defenseman. Yeah, no. Or something like that. We no, it's just that. not something we would do today. No, it's not. It's not. So And good? What does this mean? It's the first Hart Trophy in, since 1955. It's the first Ted Lindsay in Leafs history. And for uh, teams, players, or sorry, uh, fans of other teams that are laughing at the Leafs, you should. It's embarrassing that a team that is 105 years old has gone more than half a century Without an MVP, that's crazy. Fifty-five, zero Norris trophies. Yeah, none. <laughs> Still <Absolutely>. never. <laughs> zero. The Leafs were the Leafs were born before James Norris himself. Just, just zero. I, maybe they weren't, but the uh, the reality is, how old is James Norris? General Dwight Eisenhower was the president of the United States. James <laughs> Norris, eighteen seventy nine. One. Yeah, <laughs> scary. So, th so this is the thing. The Leafs have it, Andrew Berkshire. He was right. In 2017, when they did the uh, top 100 Leafs of all time, he's like, wow, you don't realize how few good players the Leafs have had. Mm -hmm. When well, you look at many, that list. How many of the top 100 Leafs ever currently play for them? Four. Mm, at least. Five, maybe five with Morgan. Oh, Morgan's a thousand percent on there. Nylander's got to be on there. Ooh. Come on, don't ooh me. He'd have to. Oh, man. You know what? It seems ridiculous. JVR's on the list. Well, he's not anymore. Yeah, he is. Well, sorry, he was in the top 100. Did they? Footoff actually... was on the list. Ooh, ooh Maron, that's so. Come bad. on, guys. Yeah, that's Neilander's on the top 100. He is. Like, should Nas be on the list? Like, dude, it's 
It's rough. There's an argument to be made for it, sure for Nas. Ooh, it's real rough. Yeah, Morgan's a thousand percent on the list. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow, wow. Would yeah. Connor McDavid crack it? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but it, you know, it does. It's kind of cool as a Leaf fan, and I'm sure any team that has had players win awards can relate to this. It's cool to see him win. It sucks, and yeah. he said it too. He's like, I kind of wish I was still playing hockey. And if you look at Kale McCarr, yeah. who I don't even think was there, he's like, yeah, it's nice, but no, I, he, I was. Was, he was there. He was. Yeah. So, the, so then, because I, I watched in and out, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the NHL awards are usually pretty boring, but Kale McCarr, I thought the quote that I read this morning was he's, he, he sort of was like, I'm happy, but not right now, please. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah, he's got yes. bigger fish to fry. Like he he's, he's still he's still playing the games. There's more important stuff to be had, and the Norse Trophy is kind of secondary right now. It, who's going to be the first to do it? Do what? Who's going to be the first to do it? What? Do what? If and possibly when Colorado drops Game Four tonight. Oh come on! Who's going to be the first to say Kale McCarr was selfish for going to the NHL awards last night? Someone is going to do it. No one's going to say that. I thought it. That means someone else genuinely thought it. No. It's going to happen. Who's going to do it? No. You can't. What? what, First time? What are you new here? Steve, come on. Vince Carter. Vince Carter, man. Now it's a little different because he had to fly Mm -hmm. to go do it. I believe the awards were in Tell, Tampa. Explain, explain that to people. What, what did Vince Carter do? So Vince Carter, on the eve of Game 7 of the second round, the NBA playoffs 2001, mm-hmm. uh, um, right before Game 7 against the Philadelphia 76ers, he went to attend his own college graduation, and he came back, or went back to... Philly. Was it in Philly? It was in Philly? The uh, graduation was in uh, North Carolina. Yeah. So North Carolina not the same Philly. place, right? And he had to go back, and then they lose Game Seven, and he misses the final shot. And oh, if he didn't go to his graduation. Meanwhile, he was pretty good in Game Seven, from what I remember. Oh, uh, yeah, but he missed the last shot. Um, if ifs and buts were candy enough, listen, don't go to your freaking graduation. If that's your take, let me throw this at you: the MVP of the playoffs, Conn Smythe Trophy winner, Kale McCarr, currently on the decimal system, is at a one five zero. The next closest is Nathan McKinnon at a five one three. So oh. if you have an issue with Kale McCarr going and accepting his best defenseman award trophy and you feel like he underperformed, I think you need to look at the rest of the playoffs. Can I just say, watching game three, you can easily, it's so easy to identify the players who are doing a lot. It's harder to identify the players who are doing a lot and the a lot is helpful. I don't know if the a lot that Nathan McKinnon did in game three was always helpful. We're not going to talk about that. Yeah, yet. we're, we're talking about the awards. Where are you going with this? <laughs> Let's talk Sorry, about. I was going to try to transition. Segment two. No, we got to talk about the awards. Oh we yeah, there's other about, awards. My bad. We got to talk about our favorite, favorite delicatessen in Detroit. More eats cider, right? Boo! More eats oh, cider. My God, that's the restaurant before, he needs to start. Before you do cider, oh okay, is Matthews the gloat? Uh, Jonas Greatest Siegel. Of all time? Jonas Siegel wrote an article, I believe. Today. Yes. Yes. Yeah? Yes. And I listen, I, I, with Paul no disrespect to, I think here's the thing. Matthews is the most technically skilled player the Leafs have ever had, without yes. question. Yes. The only thing that I would say holds him back is the lack of playoff success. So if you put George Armstrong, if you put Ted Kennedy, if you put Frank Mahovlich ahead of him, I understand that because they won cups. Yeah. And I know it was original six era, I get it. But, but, you know, it, it wasn't like people act like it was easy to win the cup in the original six era. Uh, ask Chicago Blackhawks and uh, <laughs> New York Rangers fans who won like four. Nothing. You know, it, it, it really genuinely the only thing that remains to be done is he needs to win a championship. But it's not the Gaplot, which is the greatest player the Leafs have ever had of all time or whatever. Mm. That, it's like the it's greatest Ka- leaf of all time. Gloat. It, greatest leaf of all time. So it's like the Kawhi versus Kyle Lowry thing. Kyle Lowry is a far better Raptor than Kawhi yeah. because of the longevity. Kawhi is the best player they've ever had. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. So I think the the gloat distinction for Matthews should be held off until he's like a captain. He yeah. has playoff success. Like I think Matt Sundin was pretty damn good, guys. <laughs> right. Like, Everybody's a little premature, I thought, with the conversation yeah. yesterday. But like, ah, this is the greatest mm-hmm. leaf ever. Yeah. When there's there's a li- there's got there's a legends row. Like you're yeah. there's and a, it's a little. There. He's probably the best player they've ever had. Your Kawhi analogy is perfect. 
Because mm-hmm. Matthews is is probably the best player that's ever played for the Leafs. But it doesn't mean he's the greatest. Like, Doug Gilmore is considered among the greatest, and I would compare Matthews' career so far to him. Yeah, Doug right. Gilmore, who, if you remember, was here for like a minute. He was five years. <laughs> five years. Yeah. Five years. Five years, which Matthews is has already been, been here makes. longer. Yeah. So, five years, put up a ton of points, uh, single season record, still one individual hardware with the Selkie. Um, so th- that's the comparison, but like you put Gilmore up against Matt Sundin, Sundin's resume is, just, it's just better. Mm-hmm. So let me show, let me show you this. Okay. Mm-hmm. At the height of the suck era in the NHL, uh, what is, what the what? height of the suck era is 1998 to about 2004. Oh. Actually when the Leafs were very, very good, dead puck, but dead puck <laughs> era. That's the height of the suck era. This era yeah. sucks. The highest scoring player in 2001, 2002 was who Steven? Was it Matt Sundin? No. Oh, Yarmir Yager? What was the question? No, that was a good question. Yarmir Yager was number five that year, and he had been number one the last two or three years. Okay, what was the question? 2001, 2002. Yes. Top scorer, 24 years old, in the NHL. There's a reason I'm asking you specifically. Me specifically? Oh, what the? Why would I ask you? It's not James Reimer. It's... I know who it is. I don't, I don't know. It's Jerome, Jerome McGinley. McGinley. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow, is he new here? Anyway, so he Jerome McGinley in 82 games. Full, so full 82, ashamed. He had 52 goals, which is fucking crazy when you consider that he had the most points to 96. That's when he was robbed of the heart. Yeah, That's right, because it went to Theodore. Come on, give me a break. Give me a fucking break. Sorry, Montreal, but come on. Uh, the next highest score was Marcus La- Nasland. 90 points. The uh, next Very high- underrated in the... Uh, just the grand scheme of things conversation. Oh, certainly. Yeah, yeah. Marcus uh, the Naslin next, was a monster. The next highest score was Naslin's uh, uh, teammate, Todd Bertuzzi, with 85. And the fourth highest scoring player, and I can remember zero talk about this at the time, and I read every Damian Cox and Steve Simmons and whoever else was a sports reporter article. I clipped them all out of the newspaper back then. Matt Sundin, 30 years old, 82 games, 80 points, fourth in the NHL. Dude should have been called Blitzen, because every time he came up the middle, he had two defensemen hooking him from behind. 41, 41 goals that year in the dead puck era. Unreal. Matt Sandin. So good. Crazy. It's, yeah. it's just a crazy thing. And I just, I wanted to put that in for context. I think, I think you're right, Jesse. The more I think about it, because I would have come in today all fired up and be like, yeah, hell yeah, he's the best. But he, accomplishments matter. Yes. And yeah. in the, this conversation, he's got all the hardware now. He's won the Calder. He's won the Lindsay. I mean, if he wins a Selkie, that'd be great. And he could be in contention for it. I don't know if he'll ever get it, mm. but he's defensively very strong. He could be nominated one day. Yeah. Hart and Lindsay. Amazing. That's so fucking incredible. Calder. 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 Incredible. But he said it best last night. He's like, I really wish we were playing hockey right now. Yes. And I think it, it does matter. Like Doug Gilmore is so held up. Because that surprising Leafs run in 92 and then the next year in 93, even though they got swept by Vancouver, it was like, or 4-1 or whatever it was. It was 93 and then 94. Oh, sorry. 92, yeah. 93, 93, 94. Whatever. Yes, Vancouver beat them yeah. handily mm-hmm. the second time. But, but you know, you forget, Matt's also went to the conference final a couple of times. Twice. 99 mm-hmm. and 2002. And went to the second round most years. Yep. Uh, most years, they were not out in the first round, those Leafs. Nope. Um, I, I think Matthew's the next step for him. And I think he knows this. He's well aware. You, you got to, I mean, in Toronto, you got to at least get to the third round. <laughs> Him and Mitch Marner are two thirds of the uh, NHL all-star team uh, forward group. And yeah, it's McDavid is the other one. right? Yeah. And they got knocked out in the first round. Yeah. I guess they're a really good team, but it's got to happen. And it's not like, I don't want anybody to think it's disrespect to Matthews. It's just the rarefied air conversation that we're having is, these are the greatest, you know, in, a, in and, 105 years. I, these are the best. Yeah. <laughs> if Matthews came out, let, let's say some rookie, let's say Shane Wright makes his NHL debut next year and he scores 500 points. <laughs> what next year? 500 points in one season. Okay. And he will. <laughs> so so we'll, 400 just ask, Canadi- goals. ask Canadians fans. Yeah. He will. You're, you're playing uh, NHL on rookie. Yeah. 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 He scores 500 Your points. team Canada, oh, you're dude. playing team Japan. <laughs> greatest, greatest hab of all time. No. 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 Greatest season in NHL history? Sure. Most talented player to ever lace up skates. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> yes. Best hab of all time. No. No. Fuck snow. Not no. even close. Not even close. 
There's like 18 guys ahead of him. It takes tenure, <laughs> man. It, yeah. Longevity is part of it. And Now, would Austin Matthews be the greatest Seattle Kraken of all time? <laughs> oh, easily. Easily, right? Would he be the greatest Golden Knight of all time? Probably. Yeah. But again, this franchise is 105 years old. Yeah. yeah. So it's a little bit different. And I'm, yeah. no disrespect to Kraken or Golden Knights fans, but you understand what we're saying. I well, think the greatest Seattle Kraken of all time, does he even play for the Kraken No, anymore? he plays for the Leafs. <laughs> you think it's a Geo? Yeah. <laughs> They had a tough season. I don't even know who their leading tour was. McCann. Oh, yeah. Was it? Most of it. I don't know if he still is, but he was there. He was in the beginning injured. Again, that's the the worst sin the Seattle... I will very briefly touch on Mm -hmm. this, but the worst sin the Seattle Kraken committed this year was they were irrelevant. Yep. Yes. Like, we all expected Vegas to be very shitty and very fun, and they were very good and very fun. The Kraken were neither. I, I still... I still am very upset about the response to the fact that I told you, I told you before the end, of, before the beginning of last season, Francis fucked this up. Francis fucked this up. And everybody's like, no, he's planning for the future. Well, no, they'll said. fight. No, they might even make the playoffs. You don't know. Bullshit. They were terrible. They, it was the c- roster construction is poor. The, the direction is poor. And frankly, it's just not good. Everyone has. It's just not a good. Hope. Yes. Adam, and their jerseys are cool. Their jerseys are sick. The fans are cool. Give the fans something to cheer for. Bullhorn. Sick. It's really sick. It'd the, be great if you heard it more often. And the city's great. It's a great yeah. city. They anyway. got a Jeff Bezos funded arena. Oh, Do Jeffrey. they climate pledge arena by Amazon? Oh. Jeffrey Is Bezos. Is it also shaped like a dick? <laughs> <laughs> like the Come man on, himself? Jeffrey, you can do it. All right. So I, I do want to say this. Uh, can you imagine? Uh, you have to take an elevator up to the... Anyway. Uh, Maureen Sider winning the Calder Trophy. Uh, huge congrats to him. And I, I was really, it was really, really Ooh. interesting. I was reading an article about him in The Athletic this morning. And I, I forgot about this. The beginning of this season seems like 8 million years ago. Yes. And I'm going to read this article. And this is by, I want to make sure I get this right. Um, okay, my computer's taking forever to load because you guys are both on the internet right now. My internet sucks. Oh, Max Boltman. Why? Yeah, my, my internet sucks. Max Boltman. He said, odds are you've already seen the clip. Moritz Sider in his first NHL game skating alongside Victor Hedman after a whistle, lifting his stick and swiping the dead puck away. Hedman coming in to greet the rookie with a cross check as a result and Sider going right back at him. I saw that. I remember that. This yep. was October, the first of what turned out to be 82 games for Sider in Detroit this past season. But that moment stands out as the perfect encapsulations of his rookie year, right up there with his booming hits and clutch late game heroics, because it told you so much about how he was approaching the hardest league in the world at age 20. Unafraid, undeterred, and unabashedly comfortable. Even when starting down, uh, even when staring down, excuse me, the be- perhaps the best defenseman in the league. And I thought that three paragraph stanza was the best, the best recap of more each side or season that we've ever seen. That was, that's beautiful. That is a kid who plays like a grown ass man. Yeah. Yeah. He's sorry. What I was trying to find what's mm-hmm. what's this Jesse. <laughs> Oh, baby. On January 21st, 2022. <laughs> remember, sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN kids. Jesse Blake put in a bet for the Calder Trophy. Did you announce this on the on the show? I think I've, I've mentioned it, I think, throughout the months. More Sider <laughs> at the time on. was a, in the decimal system a 3.04. Three to one. So, Jesse, how much did you put down? Uh, like 110 bucks or something like that. Jesse's payout for that. Is four hundred and twenty eight dollars and sixty four cents. Nice call. You were confident, eh? Because you're oh, yeah. you're like a five dollar guy, like ten dollar guy. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's. Uh, I gotta thank Michael Bunting for not stepping up. Damn. Oh. <laughs> wow. Shit, Michael Bunting, who came third. I also want to say I was really happy Tre- Trevor Zegers got the second place in there. He deserved it, that. He did. And he did. for for Ducks fans, you know, with uh, with I don't know what to cheer for in the next little bit here. Um, it's sort of nice to have, you can hang your hat on Zegris and Milano and all the other guys they have coming up in that system. Troy Terry. Troy Terry. Oh, Troy Terry. He's a little older, but But, you know, with Getzlaff retiring and that sort of thing, it's the end of an era. And Corey Perry playing for, you know, three Stanley Cups in a row, end of an era. It's tough. So it's nice, nice for Zegris, nice for them and nice for Bunting who, um, frankly, I, I, I think as much shit as everybody gives Kyle Dubas for Peter Morazic, and by the way, he's due for that. Yes. You should give as much praise to him for the two year, $950,000 per year deal that he, that he signed Michael Bunting to. Man, 
Give him praise for that. Real good. Like, they you can, can be mad at Mrazic, you can be mad at Richie, but you gotta be good. I mean, come on. So I, I saw a tweet. I don't remember who it was from. I'm going to say Kyle Cushman. He's, man, really emerging star uh, for the LeafsNation.com. Love his, love his stuff. Follow him right now. You Kyle Cushman. You really ought to. Um, and watch. It might not have even been him. But uh, the Leafs have several players who are eligible for an extension uh, July 1st or July 13th. However, it works out because of free agency. It's a little weird this year. This year. So even though they have... Uh, what? I just followed somebody named Kyle Cushman 420. That is not him. That is super not him. Uh, Cush as in weed, because yeah. he's an internationally renowned marijuana cultivator. That That's is the not wrong the guy. Person. All right, I'll, not the keep guy. Looking. I'll keep looking. Anyway, where was, where the fuck? I don't oh, know. yeah. Uh, Bunting is eligible for an extension now, basically, mm -hmm. in a few weeks. I think Kyle goes, hey, Mike. And Mike just goes, nice try. And Kyle goes, well... You know, you got to try. I wanted to extend you after one year of playing with two of the best players in the world, but ah, go ahead and do it for another year and we'll talk. We'll talk very briefly and then you'll go somewhere with the cap room. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I assume yeah. so. Here, this got me irrationally nerd mad. Okay. And it pertains to the Calder because someone tweeted the Calder voting from the Crosby Ovechkin uh, draft class or rookie class mm -hmm. of 2006. Now Ovechkin won mm -hmm. correctly with a hundred. Absolutely correctly, he won with 124 first place votes out of 129. Wow! He got five second place votes. No third. No fourth. No fifth. Mm -hmm. So five people in the entire world thought, you know what, second best rookie, and you can be forgiven because even though he scored over 50 goals, Crosby was alone on the Pittsburgh Penguins. So was Ovechkin on the Caps. But Crosby was also a center, mm -hmm. and he put up over 100 points. Crosby, four first place votes, 95 second, 19 third, 10 fourth, 1 fifth. Who were the other rookies? Show yourself! Who were the other rookies? What's, you know, what's, you said four first. So there's, four one, first. there's one first out there, it, right? There's what? Oh! Because the somebody other, else would have got a first. other first. Because Ovechkin oh, had five wait. seconds. Tell me, tell me. To the guy who finished fourth place, so he wasn't even a nominee. So there's Alex Ovechkin who won, Crosby who was the runner-up, Dion Phaneuf who was the other nominee, but he didn't get the first place vote. It was to the fourth place guy, Henrik Lundqvist. How good was Lundqvist's season that year? Uh, let me look. He was I, a starting goalie. I gotta say, sure. for that era, Dion Phaneuf was pretty spectacular. Oh, he yeah. was. And he, he threw was. some I get it. just body, like, devastating hits. Uh, Lundqvist in 53 games as a rookie was 30, 12, and 9 with a 922 save percentage and two shutouts. Okay, I get yeah, that. Yeah, that's that. that. real that. good. Wow. I'm, okay, that, that, the, uh, the straggling first place vote. Here's, here's the thing. If you, th if you don't believe me about Dion Phaneuf, by the way, he had 20 goals in his first season. Yeah, man. As a, as a defender. 20 goals. And the next two years, he had 17-17. That like, season was like handcrafted for him. Well, the penalties were up. So that was for and against him. Uh, yeah. But being on the power play all the time. <laughs> How many power play goals of the 20? How like, many were power like play? Like 16. Yeah, like 18. 16, yes. Uh, Holy Steven got shit! Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. So, wow. But, but to the 19 people... Oh, okay. The 19 people I think can be forgiven because Lundqvist uh -huh. was that good who voted him third to the 10 people who thought Crosby with over 100 points as a center at 18 years old was the fourth best rookie and to the one person who had him fifth, show yourself! Resign! Quit! Who was the fifth? Who was the fifth, uh, fifth highest rookie rated that year? Uh, Brad Boys. Really? Brad Boys. Is that his 40 goal year? Because that hurt. Uh, it hurt my feelings. I know that. Uh, let me look. Although I did like Owen Nolan as a Leaf. Uh, he had, in 0506, 26 goals. So wow. Uh, and Marek Svatos, Andre Mazaros. Oh, Svatos. Yeah. Some Peter video Pruka. Game. There's a name. Uh, Marek Svatos, you had to get him in the video games. Uh, Igor yes. Shosturkin wins the Vesna as, I don't think anybody's shocked by that. It's pretty obvious. No, um, we bring up Henrik. I like the uh, I like all the people comparing them and like passing of the torch from Hen Henrik to Igor because like they're 
guaranteed if he is who we, we think he is they're gonna get 10 years of success in new york because when you have a goalie that's like one one a one b one c of just building a good hockey team so they can do that from here from the net out and congrats to new york on a sustained 10-year run of success coming up here yeah it's good for them yeah yeah uh, henrik lundquist looking it up the rangers drafted in 205th overall i hate it <laughs> and like how many of those years when they had henrik were they bad a handful uh, like, none nine like, years they nine were years. always competitive i don't think they ever missed the playoffs hold on with what him playoff stats there and shesterkin by the way fourth round pick no oh. he can't keep getting um, away with it the rangers <laughs> he can't keep getting away with it Okay. Uh, how do we get the playoff stat here? NHL playoffs. I can tell you right now. <laughs> yeah. They missed in 0 9 10, mm-hmm. and they missed in 17 18, 18 19. So out of 12 uh, years, they missed three times. Other than that's that's Lundquist has played crazy. in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 playoffs. Sorry, 12 playoffs, 15 years he played. I was looking at hockey references. Uh, yeah, he's, he's played in uh, 12 postseasons. Wow. Uh, you Amazing. know, you know who made a good pick, one pick before Shesterkin, who? But they still fucked it up. <laughs> uh, Arizona with the 117th pick selected Michael Bunting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, he went one yeah. above Igor. Yeah, who wow. was a really good pick and played for them for exactly never, basically uh, 21 and games, I think. Like, yeah, <laughs> and they're like, hey, you're good now. Goodbye. And uh, <laughs> yeah, they didn't. They didn't. Is that how he became a free agent? They didn't qualify him. Uh, he was uh, he was a rare like group, group three six group six oh, uh, free UFA. Where for most people his age, he would be an RFA. Yeah. But for some reason, he was a UFA, and the Leafs got him for nine hundred thousand dollars for two years. Ooh, good deal. Uh, yeah. Let's let's talk about game three. Colorado gets two goals in the first nine minutes, but only one is whoa, actually whoa. allowed. You don't want to talk about Roman Yossi getting jobbed? Oh, well, I, oh, well, we talked about <laughs> the right we guy. Talked about won. Macar. We already talked about Macar. What are we talking about? The right Yossi? guy won. The one guy, right guy won. Yossi had more first uh, first picks or first place uh, votes. First place votes mm. Thank you for uh, for the North. <laughs> okay. Oh, do a lot you, of people saying he got jobs? Do you think he got jobs? I mean, he had. No. I think he was my pick for Norris, wasn't it? Yeah, I was. Um, I think I was the only one who picked Makar. It's unfair. It's unfair because he hasn't played hockey in two months now. M- Makar has been the best player in hockey. Well, he's been the best defenseman in hockey for the last two months, mm-hmm. right? But that's not how it's voted on, is it? It's, no, it's voted on October through april and, and that's it, it cuts off i think the playoffs proved that they made the right decision i kind of yeah <laughs> he's <laughs> well, pretty gosh darn good i think roman yossi though deserves credit for turning around players that were not scoring very well on a team that does not score very well mm-hmm. like does yeah. matt duchene have the season matt duchene had without roman yossi i don't think so well and also oh yeah some of yossi's numbers aren't great underlying i'm like mm, i would I, I don't give a shit I would encourage you two to watch uh, Nashville <laughs> games. Watch Roman yeah, Yossi yeah. next year in the regular season. And the only reason I like to tune in Nashville games is because we went, but also because Terry Crisp used to be on. And I used to like to try to figure out whatever the hell he was saying, but he's retired. It's a shame. Boo. Uh, but uh, uh, we've all seen Kale McCarr. He's in the finals. Everybody, all mm-hmm. 32 fan groups have seen Kale McCarr. Mm. How many of you can honestly say I've seen more than a shift of Roman Yossi? I can say he's been around Damn. for a long time. No, no, this season. How many? Oh, yeah. And I'm not saying I'm not calling out this show. I'm not even calling out you who listen to this show because the people that listen to this show, like if you're seeking out a hockey podcast, you're an intense hockey fan. Kale McCarr gets here. I, I got it for you. Kale McCarr gets more highlight love. Yes. Than Roman Yossi. Is and your I, argument that there wasn't enough national attention on Roman Yossi? That's what I, my argument is. And and I'm not saying the that Colorado Kale McCarr, media. I'm not saying <laughs> that Roman Yossi doesn't believe it. I don't say I don't I don't think that Roman Yossi deserves the Norris. Now, like looking back, it was probably like he had 96 points though. It's like top 11 all time. It's not just it's a points. crazy season. It's not about points. It's not. You're right. Uh, no, I Ma- think the I think what Nashville fans should do is cry about the Colorado media and then complain <laughs> about this for years and years. I think that's that, what they should do. I think what it is, though, is before people discount the fact that Roman got more first place votes than Kale McCarr did, 
watch watch a few Roman Yossi games. The guy's unbelievable. He's really, really, and they, really, really And the good. Nashville Predators are a different, and I know this sounds like a cheesy take, but like they are, there's the, there's the Predators with Yossi on the ice and then there's Predators without. And the Predators yeah. without are pretty fucking mediocre. They're like a 22nd, 23rd place team without him on the ice. That's my thing. Well, I mean, UC Saros propped up a lot. Yes, he did. A lot of bad things. Connor Ingram. The most controversial thing, I think, about the whole Norris Trophy uh, voting was not that Makar won, because he rightfully should have won. It's that Charlie McAvoy got one first place vote. Which bot, which... <laughs> I need to know. What, did Joe Henry have a voice? I, that information's available. I think in a, in a season where you have Yossi and Makar and Hedman, who finished third, Charlie McAvoy receiving a first place vote is a kind of ludicrous. Now, mo- the vast majority of years, Makar, Yossi, and Hedman, their numbers this season would be enough to win the Norse. All three of them. Mm-hmm. But only one of them was allowed to win. McAvoy? I mean... He's good. He's very good. Yeah. Extremely good. Dare I say elite. Oh, yeah. But uh, I wouldn't take him over either of the other three Th- those three seasons that those players had like i don't understand you don't gotta, it, you're not disrespecting someone by saying yeah, they're no, fourth no. best we're talking out of hundreds out of every nhl player who plays defense in the whole league i'm saying mcavoy's probably the fourth best i don't think that's disrespectful he's not the best right-handed defenseman in the nhl like dude that's kale mccarr what are you doing <laughs> What are you doing? I want to know who that vote is. Do you maybe grade on a curve because you look at Makar and you go, well, the Avs are sick. And but it's Boston. He plays with Boston. I don't know. Yeah. I don't I don't even mind like Hedman got four first place as well. I don't mind that. I, I could I understood the argument there. That's okay. But yeah. yeah. Um okay, let's get into game three, guys. Because you keep coming, no. bringing me back to the awards, and everybody wants to hear about Game Three. So the kill, uh, the uh, sorry, the Ilya Mikheyev kill Toronto Avalanche. The no, no, no. So Dan Milstein says Ilya Mikheyev. No, I'm kidding. Okay. How um, much did the media influence? I didn't game? say that. I'm just saying watch watch Roman Yossi play. I can see why he got a lot of first place votes. Why did the Toronto Sportsnet YouTube media channel is is headed by an Avalanche fan? It is it's actually Boom. Yeah. producer Drew. Media. You know what? He swayed the vote. Blame it on Drew. He did. Did you know the what? Toronto at producer Drew underscore? Did the Toronto media sway the Hart Trophy voting? Uh, why? Morgan Matthew, Riley didn't get any first place. Matthews vote. won. Oh, oh, the Hart. Hart Trophy. Tro- I said Hart. Sorry, trophy. my bad. Yeah. Well, maybe you they were, did. You were listening. But did did the Toronto <laughs> no. media then sway the players too? Yeah. Ah, yes. Like, a lot of them are from here. Ah, wait. They, so they definitely would want an American to win if they're from here. Yeah, Canadian I don't know. No, no. Listen, listen. Hey, <laughs> nine months out of the year or whatever, Matthews is Canadian. I, he doesn't need to be Canadian to be a Toronto Maple Leaf. I don't I, care. I'm not. telling you, he is. He's not. <laughs> I'm not. I he don't, should maybe even play for Canada next time we go to the uh, Well, that would be nice. Um, Him and McDavid? So it's incorporating Magic Spoon into my daily routine. And I wake up early. I have noticed fewer cravings throughout the day and more energy to hold me over till lunch. And I have to eat lunch right before these guys show up for the podcast. It's always a double show day. You have a weird schedule. It's a weird one. And thank goodness for Magic Spoon with its zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only four net grams of carbs, and only 140 calories per serving. It's keto-friendly, it's gluten-free, it's grain-free, and it's low-carb. Go to magicspoon.com and the promo code is SDP. Tell me about the cookies and cream. Uh, uh, You should try it. Magicspoon.com slash STP. Get a custom bundle of cereal. <laughs> and Magic Spoon is so confident in their product is back with 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, although who wouldn't like cookies and cream, uh, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal needs to come from Magicspoon.com slash STP. Use the promo code STP. Save five bucks off. Thank you, Magic Spoon. Hey, you already know that with the promo code Dangle, you could go to where... Uh, manscaped.com that's right thank you jesse and and you can get what jesse because steve doesn't know i panicked uh lawnmower 4.0 20 well, percent off 20 percent off the and, free shipping. and free shipping that's yeah. right and the promo code is what steve Dangle! how do you spell it what the f- uh d-a-n-g-l-e that's right <laughs> is your own name <laughs> it struck me as a strange question g-l-y-n-n it's no, there's no <laughs> Glenn promo code. No. no one, no one cares who that guy. Get 20% off and no free one. shipping with the promo code dangle at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code dangle at manscaped.com. It's time to get wet and clean with your new Manscaped shower routine. Hey, Steve. Butt fun. <laughs> That's good. How has your butt been doing lately? It's round and luscious. How about you, Jesse? How's your butt doing? 
It's been fantastic because it's prepping for a summer of Jays games. Ah, and where do you get your tickets, Jesse? Oh, oh baby seat geek. Oh, no, just seat geek, not baby seat geek. Oh, okay. What? What? No, I was just saying it's a very good transition. Okay, well, <laughs> well, it's ruined now. Seat geek is beloved by so many butts around the world, including Jesse's. It's baseball, it's concerts, it's basketball, it's football, it's festivals. Whatever it is you're doing this summer, check out Seat Geek, and you can get twenty twenty dollars off your first purchase with the promo code SDP at SeatGeek.com or using the Seat Geek app. Again, promo code SDP for twenty bucks off your first Seat Geek order. Seat Geek, take your seat to a seat. Download the app today. The Rogers Center needs softer seats. Well, bring a pillow. <laughs> Can we talk about fucking game three, guys? No! All right. What do you, what do you think of the Vesna? Honestly, well-deserved. Uh, but I thought Jack should have got it. <laughs> I hate it here. I hate it here. That's a crazy Can we please argument. talk about the fucking Stanley Cup, guys? Shelgren didn't get enough calls. Okay, goals. let's okay. Uh, talk about game three. Like I said, Colorado gets two goals in the first nine minutes, but only one is actually allowed. Uh, do you think the uh, Kale McCarr potential offside, I guess he's not that great. Yeah. Should that have been called offside? Oh, boy. It's so close. And now here's the, here's the black and white rule that doesn't work, that everyone needs to knock it off, is, well, you see the puck? Has white on both sides of it. My friend, my brother in Christ, have you ever been on ice? What happened, Steve? Snow! What? It's ice. What, and, and what are you talking it about? Was, it was close enough to the blue line that it was, I thought there was a margin of snow. Mm. Like, it could be snow. But, I mean, then we're talking pixels and pixels, mm -hmm. and it's very hard, but... I think it's. I think I'm allowed to say it was offside, and also knock it off with that rule. It's oh, there's white on both sides of the puck. That means it's. it's so offside. you say it was offside, though. I didn't think they were going to call it offside. It was extraordinarily close. What do you think, Steve? I thought it was going to count. What do you think it it was though? I'm trying to ask you what you think. I thought. There wasn't enough there to overturn it. I thought it was onside. Okay. All right. Jesse Blake, what do you think? I thought it was offside. And the whole, I have a huge issue with a certain part of how that video review went down. And why is uh, that? What Mr. happened? Jo Mr. John Cooper, you don't get five minutes to make a decision here. Totally agree. Oh, Referee, I agree with that. That's, that's yeah. right. If I'm an Avalanche yeah. fan, I'm fucking pissed off. Why does he get eight minutes to decide? Hey, I'll let me take another look at the replay on yeah. my foot. Why I'm going to look down again. The ref's going to go to center ice to drop the puck. Call him back. Get your two fingers up and call him back to the bench so you can make the call. No, you get 30 seconds or whatever it is. And that's it. 45 seconds, I think it is, after the puck goes in. And that, that's it. You don't get two minutes. You know why John Cooper took that long? Because if he gets it wrong, he gets a penalty. Yeah. Now, what have I been saying all playoff long? That should be a valid challenge. We're talking a margin of millimeters here. If Tampa failed that challenge, they shouldn't be penalized yeah. for it. Yep. No, the rule is bad. You should lose a timeout and that's it. You shouldn't get a, a power play for the other team. You shouldn't get to go mean, on the penalty kill. Maybe, maybe that's it. Because like coaches, we can all agree that coaches heavily, heavily abused the ability to review offside and goalie interference the year it was introduced, whatever year that was. Certainly. It was awful. There was no point celebrating goals. But there's no timeline, no time limit on the amount of time it takes for them to figure it out, too. There should be a time limit on if they're throwing it back to New York or Toronto. You got a minute, guys. Give us your best uh, assessment you mean, in a minute. You mean on the people who are reviewing? Yes. I, they should be on a clock, too. I, I don't agree wanna... with the clock. So that review... How did it feel? I'm because I was covering it. You guys were watching it in real time. How did it feel? Because I know how long it was. Frustrating. It was frustrating. I find the feel. What do you mean? Like how did it feel? Long? Did it feel? No, I feel, I feel like once they did the review, they got the review pretty quickly. It was four minutes and fifteen seconds. That's too much. From from when? From the moment the challenge was issued. <sighs> then we're talking uh, twenty minutes. Because it took John Cooper 18 minutes. <laughs> yeah. to, Jesse's right. Yeah, to, that's true. To actually get the challenge going. I think if you're going to make a rule, and you're not going to like this, but if you're going to make a rule for a time limit, five. 
That sucks. It does suck. But that sucks. We dude. had there was a review in these playoffs in a Tampa game. I think it was against it was from the Tampa Panthers series. Nine. It took nine. So I guess that would be an improvement. Yeah. Dude, there was a review that was more than double the length mm-hmm. of that one. Yeah. Nine well, and, minutes. And I think the thing the thing that's, that's happened period. with with all the camera angles right? and all the technology and the ability to short the blah blah blah. What's happened is in in the um in the quest to get things perfect, mm-hmm. we stop getting them right. Ooh. And what we need to do Ooh. is look at the fact that what do we do? What do we do this for? What are we doing? Entertainment. Why, why do we put why do we have fake ice in the middle of California, in Dallas, Texas, <laughs> in Tampa, Florida? Why do we have that? And we put this stupid rubber disc with a bunch of carbon fiber shafts. Why do we why do we do that? We do it for science. Sci- exactly, science. We do it for entertainment, as you said, Jesse. And I think at a certain point, we need to look at the overall product of the game. And the reality of it is, if you can't get the call within a couple of minutes of seeing all the replays, and they should be able to see the replays very quickly. And if you don't have the staff to do it, then staff it. If you can't tell, then you can't overturn the call. If it takes you that long to try to figure out whether or not the call was right, then you don't know, you don't have a conclusive, you just don't have a conclusive eye on it, and the call has to stand. That's what, like, especially the angle that the NHL released after the game. We saw that. It's like, okay, that looks like an offside to me. I felt like it was offside from the beginning. That was just my personal opinion. But I didn't know. And then you see the NHL's sky view thing, which they, for some reason, don't show on the broadcast because the NHL won't release it. I don't understand that. Guys, This doesn't need to take this long. It's a hockey game, and I know it's the Stanley Cup, and I know there's millions of dollars on the line, but people are fucking bored. Yeah. Enough. (laughs) Like, Uh, the game is supposed to be entertaining. You already have two commercial breaks in a row at the end of the third period for no reason. What are we doing? Let me throw one thing out there, because I already feel the comment section yelling at me. I thought it was onside in real time. That does not mean I think they got the call wrong. I mm. trust that they at very least got the call right and yep. saw something that yep. I didn't, like yep. the angle that you mentioned. Yep. So relax. Anyway, my, my thinking is uh, w- whether or not you thought it was an offside or not, I do feel like they, they need to put those guys on a clock. Uh, Nick Paul, another big goal, game winner. How how did he return to that game? <laughs> that was... that. <laughs> how did he return to that I, game? I was like, he's back? Really? The way, Actually. The way he went down and then the way he skated off the ice and the way he was helped down the tunnel... I'm looking at him and I'm like, I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure I just saw a man's adductor explode. <laughs> like I thought I was like, his groin's messed he's, yeah. he, and he's done for the season. Yeah. Dude comes back and scores the next goal of the game. Are you, that's the Tampa Bay lightning in a nutshell. Yes. How, how do you, you're fighting an army of the undead. Well, and how that's, are, do you know how injured Braden point must be to not he's be not playing? Yeah. Yeah. He's got to be playing sub 20%. Well, and that like, brings me to the Taze cross check on Kucherov. John, John, John Cooper said that Kucherov's ability to handle pain is the reason he thinks he'll be back in game four. Mm. But I have two questions for you, Jesse and Steve, on that. Because as soon as I saw that, I'm like, I wrote this down. I'm like, I got to know. Number one, Jesse and Steve. As far as you know, Taze cross check on Kucherov. This is a two part question. So please do not extrapolate too much. Part A, is that a legal play in today's NHL? That's all I'm asking you. I'm not asking your opinion, except for the opinion on the rules. Is that a legal play in today's NHL? Yes. Jesse. Uh, I just want to watch it back. Yeah. It's a push. Yeah. It's a legal play. Okay. my answer. Part B. Yes. Should it be? No. Because we know what's going on there. And what's going on there? Tell me. What's going on there is Taves is pushing down. He's basically taking like the crest of Kucherov's pelvis and pushing <laughs> down, putting. <laughs> Ooh, I hurt when he, you said that. That's, like that's exactly because Jesse has it up right in front of me. Oh, yeah. He's digging. It's 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 really easy, despite the fact that players are covered in all sorts of equipment and padding. It's easy to go over the lip of the hockey pants press down oh yeah there's that fucking bone right there there's basically the bread basket of the entire human body 
And the I'm axle. Gonna, yeah, and I'm going to push down on that, and I'm going to fuck everything up. I'm going to fuck up your hip. I'm going to fuck up your groin. I'm going to fuck up your knee, and I'm going to fuck up your ankle. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at Kucherov. All of the body parts I just mentioned are <laughs> fucked up. Like, and I'm sorry. There needs to be some sort of change to the rule where you can just go, you know what? That's fucking greasy. Mm -hmm. You should be able to watch that at in real time. I get it. You should be able to watch that replay and be like, yeah, no, Kucherov's not diving. He's not doing that on purpose. That's that's someone ruining all of his joints yep. on his left body at, on the left side of his body at once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, as someone with a fucked up all the things I just I, I just figured, I thought this was personal for you. Yeah, no, well, this, <laughs> as someone who's extraordinarily tight and has done a lot of work over the last two years to repair my body, that would have, I'd be, I'd, I would never walk properly ever again. Like, if, if Devon James did that to me. Are you kidding? Like, the way he pushes down, there's nothing Kucherov can do mm -hmm. to alleviate his situation there. No. Like, he cannot protect himself from that unless he just abandons the puck, I suppose. It all goes back to, are you allowed to try to injure your opponent? A little bit. You're allowed to injure your opponent legally. Yeah. And Devon Taves did. And I just feel like any time someone is injured, we need to evaluate, should this be allowed? Mm. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Sometimes you might come to the conclusion, yes. Yep. It's a, if we're going to have a contact sport here, listen, you can get a concussion. You can get whiplash from a hard hit to the chest. You can get winded. You can get this. You can get that. You can get any myriad of injuries. Do we live with that? We do live with that. We live with that. I don't like it. I don't, you know, it sucks. I mean, the it, players get hurt. Yeah, but it, there are certain injuries that like, uh, it's like Ken Dryden said in his book about, you know, Steve Monador. Mm -hmm. There's injuries that are unavoidable. Yeah. Bad shoulders, bad knees, bad hips, things like that. But I that, know is that the kind been, of injury you want to have? Yeah, I know someone who has sport. A, who who played college soccer in the States. Oh, I bet his knees are great. Uh, concussions. Really? Concussions. They had to retire because of concussions. Wow. Because you're not I, supposed to slam your head into a soccer ball. Get out. Yeah, apparently, or if you hit it improperly, or if you get tackled the right way, fall down. Like, it's impossible to protect yourself from all injury, but there, I, I'm trying to find the words. There's some, can you suspend someone one game for greasy? <laughs> and you just go, it, you know, that was greasy. two minutes, you can't do that. <laughs> like we saw a ref. Like accidentally, like just just little uh, part in the curtain when, mm -hmm. when he said you can't do that because he forgot what the penalty was, but he knows you can't do that. As McCauley, and you it. don't think Tave should be suspended for this? You're just saying no. Yeah. Come on, I don't think he should be suspended for it. But also, like if Tampa here, we're starting from the wrong place. the The place okay. the place is. Should Taves be suspended? Let's start from. <laughs> I don't think anybody thinks that. It, no, I don't. I agree, yeah. and I don't. I personally, I don't think he should be suspended. No, no. But philosophically, okay. Let's start with Kucherov doesn't play tonight. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, All right. he can't play tonight because he's injured, and he's injured because of that. Okay. Is what Taves did greasy? Not really. A little bit greasy. Also, uh. Judge, I'd like to present some new information Please. to the courthouse. Tell me. Uh, Let's hear. The, the cross-check slash push was also in response to Kucherov running Manson into the board from behind. Yeah. Also bad. Also bad. I'd like, so, to, I'd like, to, I'd like to make the argument that my client was acting in self-defense. And in response <laughs> to, <laughs> that's so and in Taves. response to Kucherov <laughs> also being greasy. Because if, if we're suspending <laughs> people for greasy it. plays... Mr. Kucherov, you're number one on the list. This is why hockey's just <laughs> nuts. Because we hand out assault coupons. And and, <laughs> and because... I've never heard it put that way before. Well, yeah, because Kucherov hit Manson from behind and all right. Greasy. And it, yes, greasy. And every player on the avalanche. Mm. Now, they, the problem is the team has to share the one coupon. Mm -hmm. 
And Devon Taves said, all right, I, I would it. like to cash in my assault coupon, please. <laughs> and so he took it out on Kucherov. Yeah. And, you know, it wasn't a frivolous use of the coupon. It was pretty good. <laughs> it was good use of the coupon. So it's fine. Yeah. This is the problem. There are all sorts of things that are not allowed in the sport. Only a percentage of them are called. So you can make, because precedence does not matter. We've already established that many, 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 many times this season. Precedence does not matter. <laughs> yeah. It's a lawyer's dream. We're you can make starting. an argument for fucking anything. We're starting from zero. Every always. single time. You're yeah. always starting from zero. <laughs> should he be suspended? No. Ask me five minutes later. Should he be suspended? Yes, for five games. Ask me five minutes later. Should he be suspended? No, it's just a fine. Like, it's that's like, why I've started responding the way I have. Steve, what do you think that should be? I don't fucking know. Like, I, yeah. It's, we all seem to agree that it's What greasy. should it be and what it will be are two different things, right? Yeah. It's a different question. Right. We, two hits have been suspended these playoffs. Two. Two. There's been three suspensions total. Kyle Clifford was one of them. Kyle Clifford. Oh my God. First game of the playoffs. <laughs> fuck me. That, uh, looking at that hit now after all we've seen since. Colton didn't even leave the game. Like. It was a bad hit. God, it was it's a bad, bad hit. Guys. Bad <laughs> hit. He got a five. <laughs> All right. And you got kicked Darnell out. Nurse. Yeah, Darnell Nurse. Finish your list. Nurse for friggin' um, Mountain Goatin' uh, friggin' uh, Philip Deneau in the per head. Perron would have Perron would have got a big suspension had he connected on that elbow with Kadri. That oh, flying yeah. had elbow. He, but he didn't. He didn't. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Kane. Who did he hit? Oh my God. Um, Someone in Colorado. I forget. I forget. Well, how did Kadri get injured? Oh, it was Kadri. No, no who, how did Kadri get injured again? Oh, it was Kane on Kadri. Yeah, wasn't it? It was, it was Vander Kane on Kadri. Wasn't that like a rough hit? Was that the? It was Kadri went in. You know what? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it was Kane Kadri went in awkwardly, and I thought it was like his shoulder or neck oh, or something. Okay. He went in, and I think, I think his hand split apart, and that fucked up his. Oh, thumb. I don't, I don't know <laughs> that to be totally the, true. The there Damn it, it is, Steve. That's twice you've made me cringe. Like oh that. my god. Fuck. Yeah, no, that's, uh, you can't do that. <laughs> you, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, fuck. I forgot how greasy that was. Yeah. Sorry, I've watched a lot of hockey over the last little while. Jesus. Yeah, so there's been three suspensions total, uh, and that wasn't one of them. Like, Corey Perry uh, getting up on JT Confer's leg on mm -hmm. purpose, trying to injure him. That's okay. It's fine. <laughs> or unforgivable. What Depends how we're feeling. <laughs> Depends how we're feeling. The precedence mm. is like, okay, is what Corey Perry did to JT Confer worse than what Jared Spurgeon did to Pavel Buchnevich? What Jared Spurgeon did is the biggest crime anybody's ever committed on ice. Yep, well. That's sarcasm. It is, yes. Yeah. But like, again, there, it, there's no, the National Hockey League has no precedence for literally anything. So that's why these conversations always take half an hour. Okay. Because you're starting from, oh, Steve, should this be a suspension? Well, there was the Big Bang, and we think that we can still hear and see it if you look out into space. Millions of years later, the Earth was formed. Like, fuck, we have to start from the beginning with everything. Game four. Well, actually, I have a couple more questions. If Game you guys, three. If you're Jared Bednar. Yeah. Bednar. Yeah, why? Well, from the East Coast. Where did that come from? I don't know. If you're Jared Bednar, who's your starter? Kemper or Francis? <laughs> Kemper, <laughs> stop it! That already. people are asking. Ooh, uh, oh, it's people asked. So I was Jared surprised Bed to see Brian Elliott in Game Three. People asked him. First off, he was pulled. Kemper was pulled. Second, people asked him after the game, and he wouldn't confirm it. Brian Elliott. Brian Elliott is Brian backup. Should have been in Game Three, is what I should. Oh, uh, you think they should have pulled Vassy? Yeah. He said. He said. <laughs> no. He said that <laughs> Kemper didn't have a good game, but neither did the team, and would not commit to who was going to be the starter for Game Four. Vasilevsky, by the way. Uh, 37 saves. Um, Kemper left the game midway through the second period, having surrendered five goals on 22 shots. According to Evolving Hockey, he had saved 2.25 fewer goals than expected. He wasn't good. That's a you, Ikea, if I've ever seen one. Yeah, wow. Some bad assembly game. required. Um, uh, it's, it's not the same goalie controversy as we've seen in the past. No. Like, I'm trying to think of, like... Um, Luongo and Corey Schneider. Remember Flurry that? Lenner. Flurry Lenner. Flurry Leonard. Halak kinda, Price. Split. Halak Price was a big deal yeah, at Halak the time. Halak Spring, baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so it's, it's not along those lines because 
neither of them is as good. But mm. also, Kemper has missed time in these playoffs with injury. So if if Kemper does not start game four, I think it needs to be because you think he's not 100%, not because he can't go. Right. If you think he can't go, yeah, go to France O's and you should be comfortable. He won you an entire series against Connor McDavid. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, but if he's healthy, I think you got to go Kemper. Okay. I, think, I think you got to go Kemper because that's your starter. And you're about to go back to Colorado after this game. Mm-hmm. And I think he needs to be your starter in Colorado. Okay. Okay. Um, a couple of little bits of trivia before we get to the coaching carousel in the NHL. There's more news even since this show, show has started. Really? Yeah. Um, a little bit. A little. Nothing crazy, but like just some interesting stuff. So I want to ask you guys quickly. Firstly, going into game four, don't expect to see Braden Point or Kucherov. And or Kucherov. Uh, they're saying Kucherov may not be able to play. But again, Cooper said he might be able to come back, but he's, he didn't think for game four. He's going to play. Burakovsky is still out. Kadri is still out, but Bednar thinks he'll be back in this series. Probably everybody's Colorado. assuming game five. Yeah. Um, how many cup finals in a row have we gone without a sweep now? Uh, since 1998. And who was that? Was that Detroit Philly or Detroit Capitals? Uh, in 1998, yeah. it wasn't 97, 98. It uh, was, uh, Philly. Philly. Yeah. Detroit, Philly. Cause Detroit Capitals, uh, was 97. No, Detroit, Philly was a sweep. Was the, did the Capitals win against Detroit? It, it, in order, the Devils, Adam, do you know the answer to your own? Yeah. It's 23 years ago. <laughs> yeah. In 20. order, the Devils swept, uh, the Red Wings. Then the Avalanche swept the Panthers. It's 1999. So yes, it's the Capitals. Oh, so it was oh. Detroit Capitals 1999 is the last sweep because Detroit swept two finals in a row. Oh, wait, there's 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. That's five. I know, but I'm asking when the last one was. 98. 99, actually, because it was, De- wasn't it Detroit? What the hell were they in order? Jesse has it up. Please help us. Am I wrong? No. I think you are. The 90, 1998. Uh, oh. Stanley Cup, Detroit. 1999 was Dallas. Dallas over Buffalo. Oh, Dallas. The, the foot in the crease. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, I got my Eat ears mixed up. Adam but anyway, it was Detroit and it was 23 years ago. There you go. And it was oh. versus, uh, versus the Caps. I don't know why. Yeah, okay. Ron Wilson's right. Washington Capitals. All right, another one. Another one. This one will be better. I promise. <laughs> Ready? Avalanche and Lightning have combined for the most goals in a Stanley Cup series through three games since who? And the goals total is 22. 22 goals in the first three games. What year, who was playing, and how many games did it take to award the cup? Post 04 or 05 or pre? I'm not going to tell you that. So we got to guess. Oh, my God. I remember the beginning. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I remember the beginning of St. Louis, Boston being really high scoring. Mm. Was it St. Louis, Boston? It was not St. Louis, Boston. Jesse, just throw a guess out there. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm trying to give a good guess. I'm going to guess. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm gonna get. I'm trying swing. to give a guess good that's swing. not complete dog shit, like somebody else. Wow. Um, wow. How about the Anaheim Ottawa series? Anaheim Ottawa. No, Anaheim did not light <laughs> Ottawa up. No. Uh, the year 1982. No. Oh. Can you name the two teams that played? I know you can name one of them. Islanders. Obviously. And I... Who did the Islanders beat? in? Because uh, people forget there was a, some pretty damn good teams that they beat in the finals before Edmonton. Everybody talks about 83 and then 84. But no one talks about 82, 81, and 80. The Habs? Not the Habs on this one. You, you get next I, I saw. Oh. It's Flyers? the Vancouver Canucks. Oh. They beat the Vancouver Canucks 4 nothing in the Stanley Cup. Obviously, 4-0, to zero, that is. Uh, but yeah, 22 goals in the first three games. Uh, wow. The And it's it's funny because it wasn't actually that split. Like, the Islanders beat Canucks five, uh, sorry, 6-5 and then 6-4. And then they kind of shut them out at home 3-0 uh, nothing and 3-1. Wow. Yeah. You know what sucks? Uh, the Flyers in that little run from 80 to 85, they went to two Stanley Cups. And in 80, they had to face the Islanders. And then in 85, they had to face the Oilers. Yeah, like just into their prime <laughs> Islanders and then just into their prime if Oilers. If you're a Flyers fan Fuck. through the 80s, you're like, God damn it. And, we had to, and they had to wear those stupid Cooperalls. Two Cooperall teams made it to the finals. The Vancouver Canucks with that big dumb V. 
that was supposed to strike fear into the heart of the opponent. It didn't. Like, and then, and then, uh, yeah, the Flyers, same thing. And they all during the post game scrum died of dehydration, <laughs> just because there's this big sweater. They got this, your grandmother knitted that. First of all, they got a microphone like the size of friggin' my water bottle. That's here. right. It, it tied to a Marantz. And they're just and they're just like. By the way, if you don't know, a Marantz is an old recording device that we used to use before iPhones, and Marantzes are twenty pounds. It's the size of a Mead five star binder. That's right. And maybe that's another old thing. What and were they, those and little... they just go, hey, person who looks like the Crypt Keeper because you're so dehydrated. There was something between the Marantz and then like iPhones that was like a little a mini disc. Was it a mini disc player? Uh, there were uh, you mini disc roll... recorders and also digital ones. I had a digital. One. I had a mini disc and then I had a digital. The digital one changed my life because I used to put that stuff in my iTunes and then use it on my thing. It was. Oof. I used to of its time. record video on my iPod Touch and <laughs> hold out the recorder. And people thought I was stupid, but I was like, the audio is good and I have video and no, no one else has video except for the big company. Why would so, you want video? Yeah. For, stupid. Dude, in 2008, I know. 2009, it was dumb. People thought that was dumb. Steve, are you athletic? Yeah. Are you green? No. But then you need to drink more Athletic Greens. <laughs> oh, you? darn. No, I'm kidding. But actually, uh, <laughs> Athletic Greens is something that's really perfect for you, making sure that you get all your vitamins and that sort of thing in, especially if you're like, let's say you get your Steve, and you're up till like, what, 3, 4 a.m.? Oh, you know. Aren't you normally? Sometimes. After the streams and everything? Sometimes. Not and then, four. Not four. Okay, three, <laughs> right? Your, let's say you're up till friggin' uh, you're 72 hours. Yeah. All right, let's say you never <laughs> sleep. <laughs> what, did, what did I take that out of? To be let's clear, say I don't sleep, sleep. What do I take? Yeah. Athletic Greens does not encourage you not sleeping. They want you to sleep. But if you've got a busy schedule, which is Steve stays up really late. If I don't know if you know this. Out. And then... He's got to get up with his son, Leo, in the morning like a lot of parents do. But you're working a lot of times till 2 a.m., right? Is that fair? It's very fair. And then you have to wind down afterwards. So Athletic Greens can help you with it. And again, it's great for any lifestyle, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free. One uh, actually contains less than a gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, no artificial anything, and it tastes good. And right now, reclaim your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one free your supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do, go to athleticgreens.com slash SDP. It's three letters. Again, athleticgreens.com slash SDP. Take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate in daily nutritional insurance. Hey, hmm. if you're tired of paying high interest with your credit card on your credit card debt, check out Lightstream. A lot of people don't realize this, but credit cards can have terribly high interest rates even if you've got excellent credit, your APR could be like 20%, 30%, sometimes higher. So stop overpaying and take control of your finances with Lightstream. Lightstream believes people with great credit deserve great rates. Now, if you want to, uh, you can apply with a special interest discount code. Again, it's go to lightstream.com slash STP. That is L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash STP. SDP. Subject to credit approval, rates range from 5.73 APR to 1999 APR and include a 0 0.50 auto pay discount. Lowest rate requires excellent credit. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash SDP for more information. Muskoka Brewery, mm. tread lightly. Mm. Steve said last ep uh, episode that it goes well with just wanting to have a beer because I was like, you can pair it with this, you can pair it with that. No. Pairs well with wanting to have a beer. Pairs well with the summertime. And it's one of those things where it's it's a beer, they, they say on the website here, venture to a place where light beer makes no flavor sacrifice. Mm. Oftentimes with super light beers, you're going to get super light taste. Not tread lightly. And it, I wouldn't even call it a super light beer. It's just a beer with 110 calories per 355 milliliter can. And like all of Muskoka's beer, a Muskoka Brewery's beer, tread lightly is proudly crafted in Muskoka with all natural ingredients. You can get it at the LCBO. You can get it at the grocery store. You can get it at the beer store. It's, My house. You could get it at Steve's house <laughs> in Oshawa. Go to Steve's house, knock on the door, and I'll have, I'll have a is tread lightly, please. Is that a part of you? Yes, can go, it's you actually can go listed. to Steve's house, and you can get a you can, you can get a beer. Okay, that's a, that's a okay. Thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, the disclaimer is you cannot, uh, but you can go to the LCBO and the beer store. And remember, it's all made right here in Ontario, Muskoka Breweries. Good things grow in Muskoka Brewery, as they as say. Tread lightly. Thank you, Steve. I thought that was going well until that moment. <laughs> Uh, coaching carousel in the NHL. And this is a Chris Johnson tweet that's already outdated, but this is from last <laughs> night. Uh, updating, looking around the NHL's coaching car carousel. Lambert, New York Islander, St. Louis, Montreal. These are all like signings and stuff. Right. Cassidy, Vegas, Tortorella, Philly, Woodcroft, Edmonton. And I've got something on that in a second. Mm -hmm. And DeBoer, Dallas. And he says, we are still waiting on Winnipeg, Boston, Detroit, Chicago, and Florida. 
which we'll get to in just a moment. Because Jay Woodcroft, uh, the extension details have come out for Jay Woodcroft, and I think he did pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, two million per year, next three years. Not bad. Three years is a pretty standard term. Two million is actually like discounted. Um, you can usually for the higher end coaches, you can expect three and up. Yep. That's why he's, that's he's, why divorce, but he's done half a season. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, uh, did Edmonton does Edmonton have a coach on a relatively affordable deal? Yes. Did Jay Woodcroft do extraordinarily well for a guy who has still not coached a full NHL season? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good deal for both sides. <laughs> Big time. And they're still playing probably paying out Tippett. I think he's probably got a year left. If not, if not, it doesn't matter. Not sure. And it's not like Edmonton's the type of team that needs to scrimp for money for coaches. Like they, no, it's they all, the, they're more than willing to pay the money. That's one of the things you don't, uh, it's not against the cap. Paul Maurice will be the head coach of the Florida Panthers. Paul Maurice, who I'm shocked, resigned just this season, mm -hmm. four months ago, mm -hmm. saying he'd lost his love for the game. He wasn't into it anymore, needed a break, wanted to do something else, is now the head coach of last year's top NHL team. I'm very, I'm very, very, very surprised. What does Paul Maurice's style bring to the Florida Panthers style? How do those clash or converge, I guess? Here's, here's what I think they see in Paul Maurice. Paul Maurice teams, not terribly unlike the Habs of last year, they don't always do the greatest in the regular season. They'll do fine. Mm -hmm. The Jets have done fine. But they don't always do the greatest. But in the playoffs, mm -hmm. the Jets have had success. Oh, yeah. One no round, question. won two rounds, got into the third round. Yep. And had they not been goalied by the, uh, by the Vegas Golden Knights, that should have been a Winnipeg-Washington final. Yes. It yep. should have been. And who knows? Maybe Winnipeg Man, wins. That Jets defense. If you could have just had a couple more years of that. That was oh, a hell of a team. I don't think you're winning two consecutive series, one against 2017 Mark Andre Fleury and or sorry, 2018 Mark Andre Fleury and then 2018 Braden Holtby. Yeah. Tough. Tough. But um I think the Florida Panthers were ripe for this sort of thing where they look at their team and go regular season success be damned. We want to win in the playoffs. And they they like Pomo. I I'm I'm surprised that a he's decided he's ready for this already the weather and, helps yeah the weather, the weather sure helps. helps and i'm also decided out of all the names available they landed on him and do you think he was their first choice yes uh i assume they got a no from trots and then yes i also don't know if the florida panthers the way they're constructed would be a trots team oh i think Barry Trotz would be just fine with Ekblad, Uyghur. Oh, I'm think, sure he'd be fine with it, but I'm yeah. wondering how they, the players would react to him. Yeah, it's weird to go from like the highest scoring team in the universe to Barry Trotz. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. that's a fair point. Might be exactly what they need. Could well, be exactly what they need. Sure not going to get it now. Yeah, they're not going to get Suckers. it. Suckers. Um, okay, Man. so. Are, are you upset if you're Andrew Burnett? Yes, oh, yeah. This last episode. <laughs> Second time in six years that the Florida Panthers have had a Jack Adams nominee and fired them. No, he's not fired. He's he's been. Well, the rumor is he's going to be offered a chance to stay within the organization. Yeah, I'm sure somebody else will pick him up. So, if I'm him, I probably say no. <laughs> um, I want to throw this out there: Paul Maurice to replace Andrew Burnett as Florida Panthers head coach, according to Sportsnet stats. He's the third straight Jack Adams finalist that will not finish the next season uh, well, with their next with their next team. Quinville and Gallant were the previous two. Man, Quinville for one reason, Gallant for the other. Well, yes. It the wow. Paul. I hope we get more information on, I assume, when he does a press conference and all this stuff on Paul Maurice's journey over the last, like, eight months. Yeah. Because it seemed like in the fall when he called it quits in, in Winnipeg that he was kind of done for a long time. He was that, burnt out, it seemed, right? Yeah. He was burnt out. Uh, and it, this, I didn't expect to hear Paul, Paul Maurice's name again this quickly. I'm really shocked. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm very surprised. And, yeah. and you know what, Jesse? I think that's a good point. You don't know, I mean, obviously, happy to see him back. Right, like it's yeah, not like, sure. but it's one of those things that what what's the journey? And I'm sure somebody's prepping. It. I bet Sean Fitzgerald's right in there, getting ready to write that story. You know what right. I'm saying? Um, it's one of those where I, I'm I'm curious to see what happened between then and now. This seemed um, like a years long thing for Maurice, where he's going to take his 
That's how he made it seem. His his sabbatical and like explore yeah. life and like uh, regroup and get his mental health together and all that stuff. And it's a very quick turnaround. And I want to know what happened. I'm just curious yeah. if anything. I don't know. Sitting at home is boring. <laughs> yeah. That's what, that's what they always say about retired athletes. You know, they get home. They're like, all right, let me do a TV job. Well, <laughs> Sit it's, one those, too much. it's one of those. You know, I get burnt out around this time of year. Like, I, and I'm purely speaking for myself. I get burnt out around this time of year. And then. Uh, you know, I get some time off and I'm very excited about it. And there's always a moment right around August where I'm like, I don't think this is good for me either. I need to get back to work. <laughs> and then <laughs> and you, I wonder if that's him. And yeah. then you make a video about the Leafs team on paper right now without oh. any signings. And then the internet doesn't understand it because the middle of August. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> what I, happened? So Summer. I made a video that I thought was fun and I got taught a lesson. Um, what happened? <laughs> I, so what I did was I made, it was like, I think it was before free agency. Even. Oh yeah. I made a video that was, here's the Leafs team. If they did nothing, it was just players under contract. Oh, okay. Right now players currently with the organization. Right. And but it was, there was like, you, I, you can't do any guy, you know, they're going to resign. They were left off. Yeah. Like oh, it was complete. It was I really sad. I took pains. What a to great idea. I thought so. Yeah, but yeah, you took like five minutes off the top to talk about what you were doing. And what and happened? I, I was promptly told to fuck myself. <laughs> And if, if you think Nick Patan is going to be their top line left winger, then you need a you lobotomy. Idiot. <laughs> Nick Patan's not there. They're, they're like, <laughs> and I'm like, I thought this was fun. And can I you, was can taught you, a lesson. Can you do me a favor and do it again this year? I'm going to. Yeah. Fuck you. Great. I'm I can't wait. The reason, the reason <laughs> that triggered in my mind is because that time, that was must have been August. Because it was free yeah. agency, because uh, that was the 2020... One season. When did free agency yeah. so start? August. They didn't something? hand out the cup until mid July. Yeah, July ish. So it would have been end. It was the middle of the summer. When I said, was when we did the video. Twenty twenty one. Can I describe, <laughs> like, the, what what last season was like, especially the playoffs? When did they hand the cup? They 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 uh, the cup was uh, awarded July seventh, twenty twenty one. Right. So you must have done that video like end of July. I have no idea. Yeah, I have no. Anyway, idea. It was the, the, the la all of last season. Was like waking up from a nap that you took in the afternoon and not knowing what day it is. Yeah. Oh my god! Without the rest benefits you get from a nap. Free agency <laughs> like began. It was uh, free agency began. Sorry, I'm I'm just trying to. No, no, uh, it's fucking me up here. July twenty eighth. Yeah. So you did it like. Yeah, the, I believe you. The twenty fifth or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great video. Thanks. Nobody Man, liked it. do it again. <laughs> no one liked it. Yeah, not you know a, what? Not a one. I think there's a lot of burnout too happening just straight up because of the fact that, you know, last year, so the, in 2020, there was like five months of hockey. Mm -hmm. In 2021, there was 10. Mm -hmm. It was, they finished hockey in August, like at August 1st, and it started again at the beginning of October yep. and training camp started before that. And this year, we're still bleeding into mid-July. It's Leo's second birthday today. Oh, officially today? Officially today. Well, officially happy birthday, Leo. Sure. Happy birthday, Leo. And Victory babies. When you should do that. What we sh no. <laughs> we we uh you know, my wife and I were excited to have a baby at any time, but she's a teacher. I'm a hockey mm -hmm. person, vlogger person, and we both made the observation, "Hey, our babies due at the end of June, beginning of July. That's perfect." And then the world stopped, and for the first time in NHL history, the playoffs started in August. Wow. And I can laugh now. <laughs> wow. I wasn't, I didn't think it was you very were, funny. It was not then. funny. I didn't think it was very funny. That was not great. Oh, uh, no, not Best late funny. plans. Yeah, the best late, yeah, you plan, God laughs. Yeah. Yeah. And God went, who did what? What's oh, Paul this? Maurice. Uh, Paul Maurice in Florida. Um, I, I thought this was interesting. I said one, one more head coaching note. Dan Bilesma will be the head coach of the Kraken's AHL affiliate. Mm -hmm. Dan Bilesma hmm. is, I'm surprised Dan Bilesma, and by the way, that is the Coachella Valley Firebirds. The Seattle's team, AHL team plays in Coachella. Yeah. And he was, That's can fun. I, can I just say, I thought Coachella was just the name of the festival. No, it's the, it's the area. I did not know Coachella that. Coachella is the area. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that. Well, and most people wouldn't. Why would you know that? I don't know. It's just a place in California. There's lots of places in California. Yeah. It's um, like, is there a team in Idaho? Oh, yeah. AHL I, I'd team? have to look at it. Hold on. Well, I know there's Tri-Cities. I know that's AHL Idaho. I don't 
I mean, there's a there's Tri City Americans, Idaho Steelheads, ECHL. They're out of Boise. They've won the Kelly Cup twice. Wow. Um. Uh. So, I want to talk about the Kraken here for a second, though. No. Um. Bilesma is interesting because his name has not come up since he was fired by the Sabers, and it went so bad in Buffalo that. He was just like, it's rare because the, the NHL really recycles the same 40 guys. Yes. It's rare that a new person makes it in. Uh, that's why like Sheldon Keith people are like, I don't know about this fucking guy. Yeah, because he hasn't coached five other teams before. That's but, why you quote unquote don't know about this guy. But now he's in. But now he's in. And he's got a job for life. <laughs> that's right. Bowsma was the most recently the assistant coach of the Char- Charlotte, Char- sorry, Charlotte Checkers. And that is previous minor league affiliate of the Kraken. And let me just throw this out there because I think this is strange. Do you know what Dan Bilesma's record as a head coach is? Uh, see, he was with the Penguins for a while. So I, mm, it's probably good, mm, but he was with the Sabres, so it might be bad. I'm going to... How many games? Five, 565. He is 300, 265. I was pretty close. 321, 90, 55. <laughs> Holy shit. That's a really good record. That's a fucking great record. He has two 51 win seasons. He's got two more 40, four, almost 50 win seasons, 47, 49. And let me tell you, look at this record with the Penguins that they went on, right? They won the cup in his first year. Uh, they lost in the conference semifinals the next year, lost in the conference quarters the next two years, conference finals the f- next year, and then second round his last year. So... He gets them to the playoffs. They, they finished no lower than second in the Atlantic. And the last two seasons, they finished first in the Atlantic. And then that was the first year of the Metro. And they were finished first there. And then he has two shitty years in Buffalo where the team is about 500. 35 and 36. But 35, their pretty good. Yeah, 35, 36 and 11. For Buffalo, that's wow. Uh, and then the next year, 33, 37 and 12. And hmm. that, those are the best two Buffalo records they've had since Dan Bilesman was, was the coach. I am sort of surprised of all the guys that are getting cycled around that he was just booted and never come back. You know what happens in the draft sometimes? And I wonder if this happened to Dan Bilesma is a guy will get passed over. Like he should have gone five picks ago. And then the next team goes, nah. And then the next team goes, nah. And then it's 20 picks after that guy should have gone. And everyone's going, nah. And I kind of wonder if there's like a weird, I don't know. Is there something, I, I wonder what NHL GMs say about Dan Bilesma. Because the numbers aren't numbering. I wonder. They don't make sense. I wonder if it's that he likes museums. Oh, what if he's a nerd? If he's a freaking nerd. What if he has interests? Yeah. Oh my God. Outside of hockey. Outside of Imagine hockey, he could, important. if he could have a conversation about something outside of hockey, he probably doesn't belong in hockey. <coughs> or there's actually, I don't know. Or, I don't know. Yeah. It's yeah, weird it, though. I can't help. You're right. I can't help but look at those numbers and be like, it's impossible to get out of the rotation of 40. Why is he out of that? Right. Not in the, like, none of the 32 jobs? None of them? None of the Not one? Yeah, that's a weird one. Hmm. Anyway, um, I want to focus in on the Coachella uh, Valley Firebirds for a second. Please do, please do. I think this is their inaugural year. This is they're named after the festival. So this is their first season ever. Uh, Last season, the Seattle Kraken shared an AHL affiliate with the Florida Panthers, uh, and they shared the Charlotte Checkers. Vegas did that. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm just I'm interested in the AHL's decision. I guess AHL slash NHL slash Seattle Kraken's decision to go with Coachella as their AHL affiliate when they could have brought back the Portland Pirates who were disbanded uh, in 2018. Boo! So I would have liked to see Portland get their AHL team back, but Seattle chose not to and they mm. went to Coachella. So that's all I wanted to say. Does oh, Binghamton I'm... still have a team? I don't think they do. Um, No, I don't. Binghamton. I don't think so. Yeah, there's, uh, there's some AHL towns. Can you do, can you do AHL affiliate trivia? Oh, let's do it. I literally just saw it and I couldn't, ah, I couldn't do Steve, it. Oh, Steve will okay, know. Okay, 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 let's okay. do it anyway. I'll let's do, let's do, do some logos. I, I have no idea. Let's where do some going. quick teams. Uh, Vancouver. Utica. Oh, they just moved. It was Utica. 
It is now uh, Abbotsford. Oh, Abbotsford, yes. Abbotsford Canucks. Well it, done. When I was in Calgary, it was the Abbotsford Flames. Yeah, a- Abbotsford, uh, no, Abbotsford a- Heat. Heat, right. And they played the Marlies every day. Yeah. <laughs> they every did. Why did they play so much? Goddamn day. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Utica. Uh, so they're that, so they've obviously moved. Uh-huh. The Utica Comets, who's their NHL? Ducks. Opponent? No. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense that Utica was even I, Vancouver's I, affiliate. I don't know. The Devils. Devils. Yeah. yeah I lose. I yeah. know a the lot about those Devils. Buffalo Sabres. Rochester Americans. Well done. Nashville Legendary. Predators. Milwaukee Admirals. Well done. Ooh. The, this is a hard one. The Philadelphia Flyers. Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Well yeah. done. Damn. Washington. Steve, I don't even have time to think. <laughs> Washington a Capitals. Team of Brendan Mennell. Sorry. Washington <laughs> Capitals. Hershey Bears. Hershey Bears. Yeah. Yes, that's an easy one. And I have been to Hershey because I have family there. Thank oh, you. Oh, cool. Went to the Hershey factory and there's a Hershey, believe it or not, amusement park. Just throwing that what? Out there. <laughs> Chocolate's a big fucking deal in Hershey. <laughs> and you've never taken it. Big this. fucking deal. Anyway, sorry. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. Oh, Ooh. the... Who just got invented? Uh, the, uh, the something uh, silver Coachella Knights. Valley? The... The something Silver Knights. The gosh oh, I like that. Darn. The Silver Knights. Henderson ah! Silver Knights. I, I, where, where? What state is Henderson in? Henderson, Nevada. Is it not? I believe you. Henderson Silver Knights hockey team. Uh, they play Henderson, Nevada. Yep. Oof. Henderson's a place in Nevada. Uh, Colorado. The Colorado Eagles. Oh, nice. You're doing that, you're doing really good. When do you ever doing, hear about the Colorado Eagles? Sorry? Never. When do you ever hear about the Colorado they Eagles? They used to have they used to be an ECHL team. Again, when do <laughs> Steve. <laughs> okay, so yeah, here's a question. Here's something completely unrelated. <laughs> Steve Dangle. The only reason here's the podcast. I, Finn is no, the only reason I know that is a bad reason. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> okay. Minnesota Wild. We'll do two more. Iowa Wild. Iowa Wild, you're doing really good. I'm way better than I thought. All right, last two. Anaheim. Oh, ah, Utica. Ah, Sorry. Ah, San Diego Gulls. San Diego Gulls. Oh. Yo, can we go to San Diego sometimes? See a San Diego know. seems like a great place. Ah, it seems amazing. Uh, last one, Calgary Flames. Are they not in Red Deer now or something? This no. is a hard one. Stockton Heat. Oh, I have Stockton Heat. Is it Stockton, California? Uh, like Stockton, California. Yeah, hey, Stockton. AHL is thriving in California, and they're getting another team in the uh, Coachella <laughs> Valley. Somethings. I already forget their their name. Uh, should have been in Portland. Should have brought back the Portland Pirates. I'm. You know why I did well because most of the teams weren't in the uh, on the East Coast. There's a shitload of AHL teams along that little strip. And I don't know who any of them belong to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's too many. There's too many, and they rotate too often. Syracuse Crunch, I assume, would be in that oh list. Oh, my God. Syracuse, they've been the affiliate of like eight teams. Mm-hmm. Is it Tampa? Remember, it when, the, remember when the Roadrunners were a team in, the, in Toronto? Toronto Roadrunners. Now they're Tucson? They were the Oilers oh, affiliate. Were they the Oilers affiliate in Toronto? the Oilers affiliate. Boy, they never figured that out. And then Toronto had theirs in St. John's for years where Paul Maurice was the head coach. Yes. And Mark Crawford, I think, too. No, uh, Paul Maurice was the head coach of the Toronto Marlies. Oh, okay. He, he might have been with St. John John's, John's Leafs. carried over? No, I don't think so. Okay, well, I know Mark Crawford made his way to the NHL through the Toronto franchise, and then in his first year or something, won the cup. No big deal. Poo. Dick. Yeah, pooey. It's I pooey. Um, okay, and lastly, and this is a little bit more, not lastly, there's a couple more, but this one's a little bit more serious. Uh, just a small recap of the hearings with the, with Hockey Canada and the government of Canada. Uh, if you're just kind of catching up on this, essentially Hockey Canada, uh, it has come out that Hockey Canada settled a lawsuit, uh, with a bunch of NDAs with eight players, um, following an incident that happened in a hotel room in London, Ontario in June, 2018. And there was a young woman who was assaulted by what we believe is eight hockey players. I believe that's been completely confirmed. Yep. Some of which have been, well, you would assume most of them were drafted because they were on the U18 team. Uh, no, U20. U20, team. excuse so me. So this, this has been the very confusing part is, uh, so it was, at, it was at a Hockey Canada event. We know some of the players played for the World Junior Team. The question was, did all of them play for the World Junior Team? Mm-hmm. 
what we discussed, this was a podcast that you missed because you were sick. Um, what we discussed was the NHL's statement on the matter confirmed that all the players, all of the eight were on the world junior team. That was not previously confirmed. And then a couple of people I spoke to thought that might've just been a mistake by the NHL. So it's been very confusing. Okay. Yeah, and even in the athletics article that they released the other day, uh, there's, they didn't confirm that all eight were on the team. They, they left room for, Hey, not all of them might've been members of the team and just associated with the event, but they were you know? all CHL players. Mm -hmm. They were all CHL players. So we do know that now, as soon as this came out, uh, the government of Canada, uh, uh, basically, which can't get along on anything, uh, unanimously, Every politician from every party is like, are you, are you guys serious? Conservatives, so they liberals, NDP. Brought them all, yeah. uh, all in and said, what's going on here? Now, the government of Canada helps to fund Hockey Canada, among other things. Hockey Canada raises money other ways, yeah, some sponsorships people, and things like that. Some people were wondering, myself included, why Hockey Canada would be in front of the government. It's publicly funded. That's yeah, right. Like you just said, like it was confusing to me too, but now, pretty I, obvious reason. I want to give Katie Strang, Rick Westhead broke this. Katie Strang has done an amazing job as well in terms of covering it. And, and what's so Ken important- Ken Campbell as well. Ken Campbell as well. What's so important about stories like this, and this is where I want to give the journalists the shout out, is it, it, when it comes to news gathering, so much of what the news is, is here's a gigantic elephant- I'm going to now make it the size of a mouse so you can understand. Hmm. You know what I mean? There's so much information. We're talking hours and hours of testimony. And Katie Strang has been doing, if you really want to follow along with this, Katie Strang at The Athletic has done an amazing job of summing some of this stuff up. So she said, among the most significant revelations from both Hockey Canada President Scott Smith and outgoing CEO Tom Rennie's testimony were... Number one, Hockey Canada does not know the identity of the eight, quote, John Doe defendants listed in the lawsuit statement of claim, despite having settled the lawsuit on behalf of those defendants uh, and Hockey Canada and the Canadian Hockey League. That's a fascinating detail. And I don't know why that would be. Players on the 2018 U-20 men's junior team, which is identified in the suit, were asked to participate in an investigation conducted by a third party firm, but were not required to do so. Number three, Hockey Canada has dealt with one or two sexual allegations, sexual assault allegations per year for the past five to six years. Huh. Uh, and number four, at the time of the ele of the 2018, and I'm going to say alleged because it, it, we have to say that it was not proven in court. Yeah. Um, so I'm saying alleged, and that's what Katie says in the article here. Hockey Canada's code of conduct did not encompass off-ice conduct, an issue that officials said uh, they will aim to rectify moving forward. Ready? Tom Rennie also acknowledged that supervision of players was insufficient and that the organization fell short. And there's obviously a lot more here, but I encourage you to check it out. We are going to, and, and, and we know we keep saying this, you know, there's certain things where you're like, I am, I could give you the rundown of this, but I'm ill-equipped to handle the, the particulars. And I think in this particular case, like, I wouldn't know the reason why, you know, uh, Hockey Canada doesn't know who these players are. I wouldn't know the reason to that. Yeah, my first instinct was to say the Young Offenders Act. Are they I, minors? Like, I don't but it's think U20. any of them are minors. So I don't, yeah. I don't understand how that works. Um, so there's going to be a lot of questions that obviously you will have and that we will have. And we're, we're looking at probably next week we're going to be able to have a more all-encompassing show on this, perhaps a special episode. Yeah, I think so. I so, think that's going to be what ends up happening. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll keep you up to date on that. And as of this morning... And Rick Westhead broke this. Um, the government, the federal government is freezing Hockey Canada's funding until the organization signs up with a new federal agency that has the power to receive and investigate abuse complaints and issue sanctions for inappropriate behavior. Boy, I mean, if you're Hockey Canada, that's a, that, uh, you have to take that. You must do that. Not just because of the funding, but you need you, hockey Canada. It's like you can't have people investigating themselves. It's like when, when the Blackhawks went through, you know, what, what happened with the Blackhawks and the investigation, they had to bring a third party in to do that investigation because the Blackhawks already did their own investigation, found out what happened and failed at it anyway. You have to bring in a third party. And the federal government's doing the right thing here by saying, uh, you're not, do, we're not giving you a, a cent until you guys bring in a third, a third party on this stuff. And it's got to be forever. And I think in the interest of protecting everyone, 
but especially kids, that's what we're talking about here mostly, um, this is the best course that they can take at least right now. But I'm this curious- This isn't going away. The prime minister spoke on it, which- Yeah. When was the last time a sitting prime minister spoke on a hockey story- Oh. That was serious. Rare. It's like- Extraordinary. Uh, we're going to make rare. a bet with the president and whoever win- loses has to eat donuts or exactly. something. You know, it's, it's yeah. just- um, so, This isn't a hockey story. You know. No, this is a life that's, story. That's fair. Too. That's a really yeah. good point. Yeah. So I think uh, I think there's going to be a lot more that comes down from this. I just couldn't even begin to tell you what the ramifications would be and what changes need to happen. I just, other than that seems like a good step to me. I don't yeah. know. I'm just, I'm not equipped for this. No, we can't talk about the story with any finality because it's not done. That's right. So I uh, just wanted to update you on that. And lastly, according to Darren Dreger this morning, uh, he said, I'm not fully up to speed on the NFT world, but the NHL is close to announcing a very lucrative agreement. With, that's he, all he said. That's all he said. Okay. So. I don't know, man. Not my thing. Well, I, 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 <laughs> I think a lot of people, I, I retweeted pass it to Bullis because he said, uh, he said, um, he said the most important element of comedy is timing. And everybody's like, the NFT thing was a last oh. year thing. Hmm. Now, I don't think NFTs are going away, uh, but it certainly seems odd timing. Everything about this is weird. Maybe they got a cheap deal. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's very funny. I, don't know. I think they, the NHL and the other leagues saw how well Top Shot was doing with the NBA and their digital um trading cards that they've created with nfts in that company and it was like okay so we're gonna kind of future protect us and sign a deal like that if if these virtual trading cards become even more of a thing that they were in 2021 when the nba really took off with them they've really petered off now yeah, i but was excited it really petered we, we, off. we talked about it mm -hmm. and i couldn't wait for the nhl equivalent of it and then it absolutely it sank died out into the earth's crust and now I'm not interested anymore. We, uh, we, I think we opened some packs. So when we were doing our Zoom episode, we opened those live on the air. Did we not? Yeah, I think we you did. You and I, because I, I still, I don't know if my collection. I haven't looked. I haven't logged into that account I in like months. But I, I just don't. I don't care. It was a thing in last summer, and I think um, the NHL is just like, okay, if this was a thing, let's just make sure that if this continues, if it comes back, that we're a part of it. Yeah, well, a good, I, I don't a good think league. A good league was on this a year ago. Yeah, so we need to be on it now. And we're and we're <laughs> late to the right party, there. and now we're here. <laughs> that's like, it right guys. there. Yeah, this is. But, uh, I don't know. We'll see how successful the, it is. The, as the NHL says, the best time to plant a tree is twenty years from now. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do the press? <laughs> Should, we, Should we do the press conference? Or? Just a constant embarrassment. <laughs> the presser. The Steve Dangle press conference. <laughs> like, come on, man. Yeah, that's true. Come on. The, the first part of the press conference comes from our dear friend Chris Johnston, who. Ooh, what? Who, who went on Who's that? Uh, insider trading and broke news Boo. instead of saving I didn't it. See it. Instead of saving it for the, the Chris Johnston show where he should. Wow. He should give the What do you mean TSN gets first, How dare you? first grab at it? Okay, we get it. We're going to have to have a meeting. You Insider trade is kind of cool. Okay, we get it, CJ. You're on it. Ugh. All right. So <laughs> like CJ said uh, that the Maple Leafs have yet to offer new deals to Campbell and McKayev. They're two most significant players that could hit the market, Jack Campbell and Ilya Mikheyev. What stands out to me is that they haven't actually really done any negotiating at all with those players. Certainly, there's ongoing dialogue. There's been discussions with the camps of those guys, but no numbers exchanged. No real back and forth there. What do you guys think about this news coming out of Insider Trading from CJ? Hmm. Can I give you my opinion? Sure. I think they're, no, they're, they already know they're priced out on Mikheyev. And I think on Campbell, they're ready to move on. Yeah, I think it's counterintuitive. Like you, you'd say, oh, start with your guys and then move on. I think they're prioritizing likelihood of success mm -hmm. and they have very little likelihood of success with either player. I think the Leafs are more likely to be able to ret retain Jack Campbell than Ilya McKay. Certainly. Because the tweets I saw, Campbell's going to be around five and that's your starting goaltender and McKay's going to be somewhere between four and five. Mm-hmm. What what the fuck? I, what the what? The the yeah. The, 
He just arrived. Yeah. Like he just arrived really as a became legitimate a, yeah. offensive threat. Yeah. And that done. No, we've seen all we need to see. Well, like, we dude, guys, Matt, look at the deal Matt Bolesky got. Yeah, that's that seems to it's be a, the And I'm not saying that Ilya Mikheyev example. is Matt Bolesky. Uh, Ilya Mikheyev had a way more complete game than no. Matt Bolesky ever did. Ilya Mikheyev is a great player and the Leafs are going to sorely miss him. Yes. Right? Uh I'm just surprised that it like he had he had a lengthy career where the puck was allergic to the back of the net. Mm -hmm. And last year he figured it out. Which is just drive the net, which is what he did. And it was amazing. In the playoffs, the allergy came back. Yeah. And uh just four or five million dollars, please. Um I'll be you know man, over four? Holy shit. I think I also think don't underestimate the fireworks from the Steve Breer firing. Um, I think that they are, they want to overhaul that position. I think they've been really frustrated since probably 2019. Like Jack Campbell coming in and being their starter was probably a nice surprise, but I hardly believe that Jack Campbell coming in and being their starter was the plan. I think that if things had gone the way they thought they were going to go, Freddie Anderson would have probably, even though I said I was on the train of Freddie's not going to be resigned, he's going to cost too much based on their salary structure. I think that had things gone to plan, Freddie doesn't get injured and they resign. And it's Freddie and Jack. And if, if, if I look at the way the goaltending, unquestionably the weakest part of the organization this year was goaltending. Unquestionably. After October, Wild. it's yeah. under 800. Mm -hmm. After November. I'm oh, sorry, after, it's, it's under 900 after November. He was unbeatable and for there, a month. And, and really, and we haven't talked about this too much because I've been saving this a little bit to, for more of the offseason talk. The Leafs' goal this year has to be to win the division. They should do everything they can yep. to win the division. And, and, and it's strategically, obviously, you always should. But I'm talking about strategically in their division. They must win. They must win that division. And I feel like they're going to take a real run at Darcy Kemper. That's my, that's my opinion. Jesse, why do you, you look skeptical? Beat the team in front of you in the playoffs. Like, yeah, the whole, yeah, but the whole, I know, but it's like, how do we make that easier? The whole thing was, all right, this year we need to get that home ice. So we have first tip. Last yeah. two years, so important, home ice. so important years. was having home ice in game seven because it's going to make a difference. No, it didn't. You lost. Jesse is, I think you're both right. <laughs> yeah. I think it's important to right. win every single, you should go 82 and 0. I, the Leafs, honestly, next year have a good shot at the division and president's trophy. I'm not kidding. Sure. Like, look again. Those are regular season accomplishments. Look at them in the regular season. What were they, fourth? Yep. In the entire league? Yep. Come on. President Trophy means so little to postseason Still win it. Result. Just win it. It does. Yeah, but but it, 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 doesn't nice. it doesn't translate to postseason success at neither, all. Neither does the hard trophy, but it's nice to have. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I think it all helps. Like, listen, if you have guaranteed home ice throughout the playoffs, does it not help? It helps. Yes, but. It, it doesn't. Historic, <laughs> not the last decade. It no, hasn't helped a no, single President's big, Trophy winner. They're theory-based. The theory based. Just the try to theory. have as many things based. Yeah, they are. They're yeah. process based, right? Have as, as many based. things go yeah. Yeah. in your favor as possible. I think it's important that the end the the, the league the, the Leafs figure this out. They have to get a goalie. Can I talk yes. about a potential complication in this whole sure, thing? Sure, tell me. Because I'm glad you brought up Steve Breer. Because I think the Leafs had misgivings about Steve Breer last year. Yeah. Right? No, no question. No question. So Usually, when there's a coach who is not quite on the way out, but the team is thinking about it, what happens? They get offside, or they get uh, pushed out. They bit. bring in either a really uh, good assistant coach or a really good AHL coach. I see what you're doing. Like, so I was surprised that Babcock was fired when he was, but he gets fired. Sheldon Keefe comes into that role. Steve Breer is the Leafs goalie coach. They're not so sure. So they hire... His Dusty replacement, emo. Dusty Emo, who they had to fire later that week because his Twitter was a tire fire of bullshit. So who did the Leafs bring in to replace Dusty Emo? Who was the goalie coach of the Toronto Marlies last year? I have no idea. Former Boston Bruin, uh, Henu Toivonen. Hmm. Illy. So <laughs> they bring him in. Is he then the coach, the goalie coach for the Leafs? How were the Marlies goalies last year? Uh, if I remember correct, they were... Very consistent across the board. I remember I mean, them. They, they they have to be happy with um, who do they call up? And you just you Eric mentioned Shelgren. It. Shelgren. They have yeah. to be happy with that. But he's twenty five. I remember when Shelgren got called up. All the goalies basically had an identical save percentage, mm -hmm. but he had the far better record for some reason. Interesting. So 
is it Toivonen or do you go out and get the other guy? Because I think I'm right. <laughs> I think that's exactly what happened. They're because Dusty Emo worked with Jack Campbell in LA. They're like, this is obviously our guy of the future. Mm-hmm. They come in, they get him. They're going to work together. And this is going to be the guy who eventually replaces Steve Briere. Obviously that plan didn't work. So now they had Hanu Toivonen in uh, with the Marlies. Now who's going to be their goalie coach? Because I don't know if you can go out and get a goalie without a goalie coach. I mean, you can, but those guys are thick as thieves, right? Like they have to work together every day. I think it's important to have that lined up. I think with any goalie candidate, or maybe you can't sign a goalie coach until you get your goalie. Yep. I'm only laughing, Steve, uh, because it's when I'm on the, the AHL website, because Shalgren's no longer listed on the Marlies roster or didn't finish the season listed there, mm. they no longer have him listed. So I can't look up his stats on the on the AHL website. Oh no! If I remember like, correct, he was, oh my god, I want to say fifteen eight and one and had a nine. But it's just frustrating, you know. Like, like why would why? Just every goalie that played for that team, tell me what that was. Can you yeah. tell me what that was? Uh, last year. Eric Schalgren had 15 wins, eight losses, one tie. He was a 904. Ah, 904. And Wol- Toronto Marlies. Wool played well too, 15 games, uh, 907 save percentage. But everybody else was not great. Eh. What are what are average save percentages in the A? Are they like lower than the it's NHL? It's super team based. Is it? It's super team okay. based. Boy, yeah. goalies if- are so hard. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, they are. Can there just be a goalies only website? Cat friendly, but for goalies. Only this guy is good. This guy is not. Dot com. Only goalies. Only goalies. Goalie hub. Whoa. (laughs) Right. Whoa. Um. I don't know. Do we have another question, uh, Jesse? We're all good. Um. Game four tonight. Very interested. I'm happy that Tampa made it a series. You have to lose a couple games to win it in six or seven. Avs fans. So don't be too discouraged. But tonight is the night. That this whole series is on the line. This is you, know, yeah, you, you got to put away right. the beast. You got to do what nobody else has been able to do. You know, win that third game versus the uh, except for the least, I guess. Win that game three or game four, and you go up three one. You put a stranglehold on the series. The Rangers couldn't do it. Hopefully, we'll see if the Avs can do it. All Colorado has to do is win two of the next five, mm-hmm. which sounds easy because it's Colorado. It's against Tampa. <laughs> When when you go up 2-0, the other team has to win four of five games. It sounds oh. impossible, but it's Tampa. Uh, you just there was a energy about the lightning that just said, "Here we fucking come." This is this is the most important game of the season for both teams mm-hmm. until the next one. It's that time of year. <laughs> yep. It's the best. I'm very excited. And where can people watch it if they're in Canada or have a VPN? people do that on Sportsnet's YouTube channel watch the Stanley Cup playoffs with Steve Dangle hope my internet works neighbor was doing some work on their front yard and cut the line but we got a temporary one put in so I hope it works Sportsnet's YouTube channel was that a good sell the Steve Dangle podcast powered by Sports Interaction Canada's Sportsbook Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.